So when people first start learning the pentatonic scale, they'll learn the first position and then they'll start to add the others and connect one on the, on the back of the other, working all the way up the neck to the top, which is a good way of starting to learn to play. And similarly, when you learn to improvise, you'd be, let's say, you're playing over a, the usual C3 chord trick and you'll stay in key, you'll stay using that same pentatonic over and over again um, throughout while you're within that one key. Now, uh, another thing that you can do is to start to introduce some of the uh, some of these harmonies, some of the chord harmonies that you're playing over, uh, and you do that by changing the pentatonic scale. So instead of just sticking to the same pentatonic scale all the way through while you're staying in one key you start to change the pentatonic scale as the chords underneath start to change as well. Um, now, you could, you could always just move to the next position. So for example, I'm in C here, C major pentatonic. And when I move on to F, I could jump up to just here and play the same shape. So my little thing's on the 13th fret, and then I play G. I'm up on the 15th fret but there's a lot of jumping around here. The other thing you can do is stay in position, but use the, the pentatonic position around that fifth fret that's associated with the other chords. Uh, so for example, if, if I then move to G, I'd use this position. And if I'm in F, I'd use this one. And then back to my tonic. And so what I'm doing here is um, I'm staying in the same relative position, but I'm using the different pentatonics around that shape. And th that's really what I wanted to focus on this week is, is the relationship between different pentatonics and the same position on the net. Um, and the best two to work with um, when you're first starting to learn this are the dominant and the subdominant pentatonics, because those, those are your standard three chord trick, if you like. So, you know, C, F, and G. So if you learn where the F pentatonic and the G pentatonic is in relation to C, then, then you've got some useful tools that you can apply. Now, I, I prefer to use the term subdominant and dominant because the rules apply irrespective of the key that you're playing in. So this is much more about how the different shapes relate to each other in the key. So if you like the dominant, if I'm, if I'm in C, the dominant is the fifth above. So one, two, three, four, five, there's my G. So G is my dominant, and the subdominant is the five notes below. So C, B, A, G, F. So there's my F, five notes above is G. And so you can also see that uh, G is the dominant of C, but if I'm in the key of G, I'm going to go five notes down and back to C again. So C is the subdominant of G, if you like. So you can see how these, these two relate to each other. One's the flip side of the other. You can think of it like that. Now, a good way of learning these relationships is to work through the circle of fifths, which is uh, the exercise that I thought I'd show you this week. And, and really what we're going to do is we're going to stay in one position and then we're going to walk through the circle of fifths one way and that will show you the relationship of the, the dominants to each other and then we're going to walk back up again and that will show you the relationship of the subdominants. And really what, what I want you to, to do is to be able to drop into any position and understand, okay, there's my dominant. That's my subdominant. And then I'm back in. Back in tone again, back on my tonic. So let's zoom in uh, and I'll focus on, on this hand and I'll show you the relationship of all of the five positions with relation to each other as we move through the circle of fifths. So I'm up on the fifth fret for this. I'm going to play around this C major pentatonic shape start there. So this should be the shape you're very familiar with. 
And let's find the dominant for this. So the dominant for C is G. And the, the shape here starts. So you'll find when you're moving from a tonic to a dominant, one note will one note will flatten. So in this case it goes from C to the B. And that's the only note that changes. So that's the shape of the dominant. As we're walking through the circle of fifths, we will find the dominant of G. So the dominant of G is D. And as I say, only one note will change, which is from that G to the F sharp. And that gives us this shape. Oops. And so that's in D. Then we move on to A. So there's our A, and the note that changes here is that, that D to C sharp, and every other note stays the same. And you should recognize that shape. And then we move from A to E, because the dominant of A is E. And the note that changes is that A goes down to a G sharp. We find we're in another pentatonic shape. Okay, and the dominant of E is B. Uh, and when you move from B pentatonic, uh, E pentatonic to a B pentatonic, you get this shape in that position. So you should see we're back to where we started, but one fret down. We started in C and now we're in B. And I could continue this, this relationship over and over again and see that my pentatonic shapes move further and further and further down. Etc, etc, as I, as I go further and further around the circle of fifths. So let's go the other way. So going the other way is in adding the subdominance. And all we're doing is re reversing the direction and the order of the, the pentatonics one after the other. So I'm in B, and the subdominant of B is E, and all I do is I sharpen that D sharp to an E. And you should recognize this shape again. See again. And really all you're trying to do is to, to recognize the relationship of one of the pentatonic shapes to the, to the next one before and after. So for example, my dominant was that to there. I flattened one note and created the next shape. And when I go to the subdominant, I sharpen one note in this case. It's the E to the F. And that's it really. All, all you need to do is to start to commit to memory this relationship of pentatonic shapes to each other. So that's it, hopefully that was useful for you and you can see how, how the notes change and how the positions are very closely related to each other and how you can use one to move and play over the dominance, how you can move the other way and play over the subdominance. So 
have a go with it, play against a couple of different backing tracks and just see how these scale shapes relate to each other and see how you can bring these, these new notes into the, into the improvisations that you want to make. Good luck with it and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.